Now in our exams, we did not need to flask our models. So uh, from now on, I'll be showing a different model that I had used um, in class. So let's get into how flasking is done. Now, when it comes to flasking, we begin the whole process by breaking the occludator. We take this occludator off, so you are left with only a maxillary part that looks something like this and a mandibular part that looks something like this. Now, we take the part that we want to flask. For example, we're trying to flask the maxillary part. We take our now separated maxillary model and place it into the lower part of the flask, which should already have been filled with gypsum. The model is pushed into the flask until only the wax part remains above the gypsum. Now we wait for the gypsum to dry. Once the gypsum has dried, we then go on to isolation. In our case, we isolated using soap water, where there was literally a mixture of water and soap. You place the model into the mixture and you just move it about for about five minutes. Once we think our flask has been fully isolated and the gypsum has been completely isolated all around, we bring it out of the soap water and fill the rest of the flask with gypsum, making sure to cover all the parts. Then we close the gypsum model and wait for it to dry. Once we feel like the flask has dried on its upper and lower surfaces, we can place our flask into some boiling water. The whole point of this boiling water, which we leave it in, by the way, for about five or 10 minutes, is for the wax inside to melt, leaving an impression in the gypsum along with the acrylic teeth that we have placed. After about five to 10 minutes, when we think that the wax has melted inside the flask, we remove the flask from the boiling water and we open the flask up. As soon as you open the flask up, it will look something like this. It will be filled with melted wax and the melted wax now needs to be removed. We did this by uh, removing it with boiling water using this tool, as you can see in this video. And once all of the wax uh, and base plate, if you did use base plate, has been removed, then we can start the next step, which is the acrylic step. For the acrylic stage, we start off by isolating with a heat activated isolator. Um, once we have isolated with the heat activated isolator, we wait for it to dry. And then the impression that has been left by the wax in the gypsum is filled with acrylic. In order to create this acrylic into the proper uh, consistency, we mix the monomer, which is usually a liquid, and the polymer, which is usually a solid, together. In this mixing process, it goes through a couple of stages. We start off with a wet sand phase, moving on to the sticky phase, moving on to the plastic or the working phase. This plastic or working phase is what we place into the gypsum. And the final phase is the gummy phase. Once the acrylic has reached the gummy phase, it is no longer usable and shouldn't be used to create your acrylic denture. So the acrylic has now reached the plastic phase, which is the working phase. So we place it quickly into the impression that has been left by the removed, by the now removed wax. It has been, once it has been placed into this impression, we close the flask once again and press it uh, on a hydraulic press for 200 uh, PSI. Once this has been done, we grab our flask and place it once again into boiling water. Now, when it comes to acrylic being put in boiling water, there are two types of cycles you can take. One is the long cycle. This cycle, um, I'm not going to explain in this video because we did not use it. We used the short cycle, which is you place, the, uh, you place your flask into boiling water at 100 degrees exactly, not higher than 100 because at exactly 103 degrees, the monomer of the acrylic starts to evaporate and then you will get bubbles in your denture, which you do not want because it makes it weak and easy to break. So the water is at 100 degrees Celsius. The flask is placed into the boiling water for exactly 30 minutes and then removed. Once the flask has cooled down, the uh, flask is opened up and the acrylic resin is removed as so. Once 
once we have removed our denture from the flask, we are nearly done. We pretty much already have our denture in our hands. The only uh, step left is to clean it, remove the gypsum, and then to polish it. Now is the polishing phase, the final, and I think the most straightforward. We start the polishing phase by using burrs in our clinic rooms. Uh, we use the burrs to take up the bigger parts of the gypsum and then make it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and the burrs become softer, softer, softer. The final burrs that we use contains uh, sandpaper, which is the softest thing um, that we have. And then we go on to the actual polishing. In polishing, we use um, a rough paste, uh, an abrasive, uh, in order to take off the little minute pieces that you can't really see of acrylic resin to make it just smooth and then once that is done and we think we have polished it enough we go into the second burst which is a softer burst it's actually very soft if you feel it um, this burst is used to do the final polishing giving it that nice extra shine making it look like it's ready for the patient's mouth but be careful with this burst because uh, it can get very hot and this can damage your uh, acrylic resin and your partial denture might come out a bit deformed which is what happened to mine on the anterior part of my uh, denture if you can see over here So the first mistake which I made was uh, not using tissue in the palette while I was working on tooth placement and moving it about because you will realize that when you are working on it when you're removing the big chunks of wax and even little pieces they keep dripping down so if you have some tissue within the palette it helps prevent the wax from dripping down into the palette making it less smooth so if it doesn't drip in there it will be smooth and it will be much easier for you in the later stages to make it look aesthetic as you need it to be. Another mistake I made is that I learned which teeth were supposed to touch the horizontal plane or the glass plate and which teeth weren't and exactly which parts of the teeth were but I didn't learn the exact um, locations of the teeth in relation to one another in order to create that proper shape of the arch and that caused me a lot of problems in the beginning but obviously eventually I went on Google, looked at images, asked my teachers, asked my peers and that is the main thing when you are working on your dentures in class make sure you have a lot of teamwork because other people see things within your denture that you do not see within them yourself and they can give you some really valuable opinions to help you improve your denture. As for the things I learned when it comes to creating my complete denture, I finally learned how to create my proper dental arch. As you can see from my denture in my final exam, the teacher did compliment it, so I'm just going to say that it was a good dental arch, uh, but yes, to each their own opinions. <laughs> I also learned how to polish properly and how to polish using a blowtorch, because when you do use the blowtorch, there is a slight chance that your teeth could possibly move, and um, you have to consider to yourself whether you are willing to take that risk whether you have enough time to take that risk or not. When I did it in my, in my exams, thankfully my teeth didn't move around a lot, but when I did it in, uh, in practical lessons while I was still practicing and learning how to use the blowtorch for smoothing, my teeth did move around a lot and it wasn't touching the glass plate properly and that, were, and that was causing me a lot of issues. But once I learned how to use it properly, as you can see here, it makes your denture look so much better. Also, I learned that when you're um, connecting the uh, wax rims to the base plate in the second stage, I think it was, of creating our denture, um, I learned to use a wax pen, which I actually learned from a YouTube video. Um, check in the description, I'll uh, keep that link down there, um, where you just create, take a sheet of wax, create into, roll it up into a little pencil sort of shape, and then just use that to connect the wax rim onto your base plate. And it's so much easier than having to use a spatula, having to melt it down to fill up that little gap that you have between the two. I also learned that during polishing, do not press too hard onto the actual uh, polishing instrument because um, especially when I did mine, it was a very hot day. And when I pressed really hard, the friction between the denture and the polishing burr caused even more heat and that is what caused damage to my denture. So do not press too hard when you're working on the polishing thing. Take your time um, and you will get very good results. But the real thing that I learned from creating my denture is that just like life, it takes time and effort to create the perfect denture. It won't always be perfect. There's always going to be something that you can improve. But as long as you believe in yourself, as long as you keep working hard and keep practicing, one day you are going to get there and you are going to make the perfect denture.
Thank you all for watching this video. My name is Future Dentistan. If you did enjoy this video and if it did help you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to go down below into the description where I will have links uh, to the many different videos, all the different steps of the denture in much more detail than I've explained them here because time is of the essence. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you're new around here. What are you doing? Subscribe right now. Um, leave a comment down below. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email me. My email will also be in the description. Um, my name is Future Dentist, and I'll see you guys in the next video.